Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming to our um, final session today. I know it's the last session on day two for us, but I do think it's going to be a really interesting one because we're going to be dealing with issues that have cropped up in every other session that we've talked about over the last couple of days. And it's all just about the change to the cityscape. You know, how all of the um, technological changes that are coming along are going to change where we live and how we live uh, and how we fund it and what we do about it and so on. So we've got a, a really good panel of experts to go through different elements of that. We're going to have bigger picture stuff. And then we're going to specifically look at what's happening in Cardiff, uh, where they've just got some money and they're putting in a big push to put in, have just put in electric chargers, so big changes for Wales. Because I was saying, I was looking at the, uh, the charging map for the UK, and there weren't many in Wales <laughs> not that long ago. Um, but you're changing that, so we can find out how that's all gone. So we've got a, a series of single and double act kind of presentations, uh, and then we're going to have a sort of questions from a panel afterwards. Just so you know, we've been using Slido this year. You might have used it already. If you haven't, please download the app. It's a, a genuinely easy way of asking a question, much easier than having a microphone passed around the room. You just load up the app and then put in the HWYSUK where the hashtag is, and that's it. You don't have to put in your email or name or anything if you don't want to. And then you can post questions. I get them on my phone and I can ask those questions. Um, but anyway, so I'll, I'll go through who we've got here first of all, just so everyone knows. We've got Kate Kenny on the end, who's the Head of Sector Cities and Places at Jacobs, um, with Carlo Castelli, who's Head of City Solution at Jacobs. So that's the Jacobs double act there. We've um, got Alistair Hunter, who's Director at Arup. It's in the middle. Then um, Jason Dixon, who's Operational Manager of Transport Development and Network Management at Cardiff Council. I hope you can get these job titles right, but... Jason's the expert in what's going on in Cardiff at the moment. And then we've got Tom Morgan, Client Development Director at Arcadis. So please welcome them. Um, Kate, do you want to kick us off? And Carlo, oh, right. he's coming across. So thank you so much and congratulations for making it towards the end of the session. As always, they leave the best till last. So <laughs> we've got a great lineup here and we're really privileged to be part of this panel today. Um, I'm Kate Kenny, and I head up our cities and places business at Jacobs. Um, and I've got the wonderful Carlo Castelli with me. We're operating in a double act. Um, hopefully that will mean we'll have a bit of diversity and interesting opinion and debate. So we come here to talk about how we reuse <coughs> and rethink urban road space to be going back to really people-centric thinking and what that means for communities. So at Jacobs, we have a new motto, which is about how we challenge today um, and think about tomorrow. And that's really how we're positioning our presentation today. So I'm going to take you through why we believe everything is urban and why there's a need for change and what this means for you. Then Carlo's going to pick up how we should be reinventing the future and what we see as the way forward. So what, what does everything is urban actually mean? I think most of you will be familiar with the concept around urbanisation. And the UN predicts that 66% of the global population will live in cities by 2050. So most of us live or work in cities or will do. However, what about the people that don't? McKinsey have stated that 80% of global GDP is generated from within cities. So whether you live in a city, work in a city, or don't, your life is impacted by what happens in cities. And that's why this is a really important conversation to have. And how we consider the highway's role within a city and how we make best use of urban road space. So we also know um, there's work to do around highways. So 85% of UK transport journeys every year are still by car, and 85% of those have one person occupancy. So a lot of behaviour stuff that has to change. But there's opportunities around that as well, and particularly around data, as we've heard in other sessions too. Um, an amazing 
8.4 billion devices were connected in the UK in 2017. And imagine if we properly use that data, what that could mean for us. So the need for change. We are familiar with a lot of these concepts, so I'll run those, us through those quite quickly. We've got a growing intergenerational gap, loads of opportunities for a growing economy, which are offset by challenges around the climate, the climate emergency, and we're all aware of the kind of targets that cities um, are putting in place at the moment. Growing air pollution and quality problems, um, growing environmental awareness and campaigning, um, people making really different lifestyle style choices about how they wish to live and work. And I don't need to get into the political climate right now. And this is layers on top of some big trends which present great opportunities too. Sustainable and shared mobility, demand re um, responsive transport, autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles, which I know that um, Tom and John will pick up in a moment. And these new modes of transport that are coming in disrupting. So presenting challenges and opportunities. So we know car usage is continuing to increase and car mode share is still really high. And so this is why we need to be on top of this at the moment. And I think this is a point to celebrate the work of the people in this room and outside and the people that have gone before us. Because the highways industry has been amazingly successful in the UK. Nowhere in the UK is more than six miles from a road. And that's a phenomenal achievement to have created this amazing capillary network that can create so much opportunity for the UK. And our real challenge now is how to best utilize that utilise that for people, create even more connection and opportunity for our citizens. So what can we learn from global stories and things that have happened in cities around the world that might influence our thinking in the UK? So you may know that Coritiba um, in Brazil is considered a lab for urban planning. The work that has been done in Coritiba um, particularly around BRT, really influenced a lot of um, the things that have happened in Bogota as well. Um, there's a fantastic phrase from, or quote, from the mayor of Bogota in Colombia. An advanced city is not a place where the poor move about in cars. Rather, it's where even the rich use public transportation. So, those cities have been really bold and ambitious in, in what they've sought to achieve, and there's so much we can learn from them. And in Denmark, too, where they reconsidered the role of the gas station in a social context, how can you make a petrol station into more of a social space? What, what could that mean for the UK as well? So I'm going to pass over to Carlo, who's going to talk about reinventing the future. Thank you, Kate. We thought that being in a Jacobs Theatre and uh, being from Jacobs um, was kind of uh, appropriate to reference another Jacobs, Jane, who in the 60s, early 60s challenged Bob Moses, chief planner of New York City, who intended to bring a 10-lane uh, motorway through uh, Greenwich Village where Jane was, uh, was living. Um, so. Uh, Jane is at the core and the base of, of modern urban planning that kind of put people back in the center of what you know, our process and design thinking uh, is nowadays. Uh, of course, there are uh, new lessons that over the years, over the decades, actually, kind of, uh, we learned from uh, Jane Jacobs' approach, you know, the eyes on the street, uh, community-based-led approaches, etc., but also some literature referencing uh, Jane Jacobs' approach uh, to kind of nurture some of the processes of gentrification as well. So uh, I think you know, it's interesting nowadays to kind of really rethink this kind of dichotomy that was so strongly fought in the 60s and actually in a, in a much more balanced and uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, objective way. 
So we looked at, uh, you know, we look all the time at, at uh, principles for what we do. And by the way, we don't do it ourselves, you know, uh, exclusively. We do it in a highly collaborative and uh, uh, open way. So we, we work with partners all the time. But we'll, when we do uh, work with cities, you know, with the, both the public and the private sector, we really want to kind of understand what the principles uh, for our um, mandate is. Of course, you know, think about Highways UK and, and uh, today's fantastic uh, event and celebration of uh, the fantastic achievements that Kate referred to. We have a fantastic uh, platform of infrastructure that is so uh, f outreaching and, f and democratic, I would say, because it really kind of, you know, reaches out to everyone. So it's, 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 it's incredible nowadays to have the opportunity with new eyes to kind of rethink that, that network with uh, uh, other principles. So technological change, of course, we're going to hear a lot more about EVs and you know, uh, autonomous vehicles, you know, drones. You know, they're all uh, on our newspapers and, and uh, non-specific uh, specialistic literature. But we need to really kind of embrace technological change, but always kind of reminding ourselves that uh, what we are thinking of is actually the people that you will utilize that, that change and their related needs. Uh, I think that, that platform, and it, I think it's more associated to public transport, but it's incredibly powerful in supporting development, urban development, to kind of provide people with the spaces, affordable spaces that they, they desperately need to kind of really thrive and, and uh, trade and exchange. Um, <clears throat> of course, global challenges are, are there, not only the environmental ones that are somehow nowadays really kind of uh, high on the agenda, but the social inequality is, uh, is quite incredible. 27 people at the top of the income scale owning as many assets as the lower 50% of the global population, according to Oxfam. So 27 people, 3.8 billion people owning as much. So we have a great opportunity to rethink our cities to really address those, uh, those challenges and those emergencies. Um, of course, highways are an incredible opportunity also if we think or rethink the, the frequency with which highways and urban development really kind of interact and uh, multiplying the opportunities for people to kind of, you know, stepping in and out almost in, in an airport kind of land side, air side way, uh, uh, which are much more common in, uh, in nowadays uh, approaches to urban development. When we pe put people at the, at the center, at the heart of what we do, of course, it's a reallocation space. So technological change implies an optimization of, what, of how much uh, cars need and, and sort of individual vehicles. And we know that uh, people somehow aspire to, to have a, a comfortable way of, of moving around. But that, some, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, optimized to kind of 30, 40, 50 percent less than uh, what used to be. So we can actually uh, model uh, that, that space uh, and how much we got availability for and reallocate into other uses that are more uh, environmentally and socially uh, just. Uh, I talked about people at the heart, but it also that is a, is a two-way, uh, two-fold um, conversation. So we need to embrace and, and, and support uh, the new needs that technological change and, and societal uh, change imply. But at the same time, we need to also kind of somehow do our, our bit uh, as uh, professionals, intellectuals, and, and uh, uh, urban um, uh, professionals to kind of really uh, promote and, and inform behavioral change. That is so important to, uh, to make a difference. And again, that, that platform that we talked about, that network, can be completely reinvented by thinking about uh, multi-utility corridors. So really understand that you know, a, a highway uh, should and could not be about only kind of uh, car movement, but anything else. And I'm thinking particularly about what I call data-oriented development. Nowadays, connectivity is key. You know, the first thing that you do uh, entering a space is actually w looking for a Wi-Fi connection. That can be an amazing device to kind of really underpin development and really kind of create value that can be captured and reinvested in our, in our infrastructure. So it took a bit of time, but you know, the principles are obviously probably the, the, the most important part, part that uh, 
uh, I wanted to talk about. So we live in extraordinary times. I mentioned the environmental and social, social uh, emergency, but also interestingly, cities nowadays uh, compete and collaborate as ever before. Globalization and urbanization at play you know, in parallel really kind of makes cities aware and city uh, leaders aware of what's going on, uh, you know, 100 miles or, or 100,000 miles uh, away. So um, what we do is more and more about helping cities in their competitiveness to understand how they can reinvent their vision and their identity to kind of really go out there in the globe and compete with others. So we're going to show you three examples um, that we, um, we worked on, again, with partners. Um, and uh, Edinburgh is a, is a great example that we are very proud of. It's been recently completed and approved by the council with a complete new transformation plan for the city center of Edinburgh. Edinburgh is a very beautiful, wealthy uh, city, uh, lots of history, UNESCO heritage site, but somehow was a victim of its own success with the uh, touristic trends incredibly successful with, in the millions, really, in the last 10, 15 years, and somehow originating and creating major conflicts between the visitors and, uh, and the residents. So what we did was uh, through heavy transportation modeling and uh, uh, really kind of GIS reference information, 400 layers of, of information uh, mapped out to really understand what the priorities were and which interventions could have been brought about change tomorrow in one, three, five, ten years. We did it in a highly collaborative uh, manner, as I mentioned before, I'm keen to, to repeat this because uh, challenges and uh, complexities nowadays are, are, are highly um, complex and we need to kind of uh, partner together to really kind of tackle. So we had 10 partners in our team working closely with the council. So what you see on the screen is a, is a framework uh, that captured the whole uh, city center, but also we went all the way to the detail of some interventions that you see some sketches in the top left corner. Sorry, thank you. Critically, also, uh, also, we measured with Symmetrica, our partner company, the social value <coughs> excuse me, of the intervention. So we originated 310 million pounds of uh, well-being benefits uh, based on the, on the interventions that we originated. This is a <coughs> big, bold move uh, that um, our colleagues in uh, Texas, Dallas, uh, uh, ideated. Um, it's about the, the Clyde Warren Park. It's, a, it's an eight lanes um, uh, highway that has been uh, <clears throat> uh, put underground and over uh, has been built uh, a beautiful park. Uh, we didn't do the landscape, we did the structural uh, fire engineering and uh, mechanical um, uh, engineering for it. <clears throat> it's a great example of how, you know, this is capturing eight tons of CO2 a year. So completely subverting so the, the, the vision and uh, creating trust with the, the, the local communities, but also creating value for the real estate around and transforming uh, <coughs> part of city, linking the north and the, and the city center. <coughs> Excuse me again. This is in uh, Birmingham, where we are. <coughs> we work closely with Birmingham City Council. Uh, and in collaboration with Cushman Wakefield and Network Rail to reinvent uh, uh, the way that uh, people move into the city center, reinventing and reconfigurating the, the A38. 50% uh, of, the, of the through traffic is not, uh, um, uh, has not the objective to c go into the city center, it's actually purely through traffic. And by the way, that's true for Edinburgh as well in the 30%. So, we need to really understand and measure what, what's going on to really understand how much space we can reallocate to uh, reinventing the city center of our cities and not only the centers, of course. And again, here again, we, we assessed um, uh, at a high level the economic benefits uh, of such a big, bold move uh, would imply. So just to conclude, uh, I think that, and we think that uh, the vision for the future, it really lies in uh, 
integrating uh, the approach in a collaborative manner by looking at uh, sharing and sustainable mobility that we're going to be hearing about, uh, low carbon future, uh, addressing the environmental emergency, creating and supporting uh, resilient and connected communities, and of course the data and hyper connectivity that we got the opportunity to leverage. And data is critical because it enables us to really understand and model not only the, the, the snapshot of today, but also the 20 year horizon so that we can really understand uh, uh, what the vision looks like and communicating to the various stakeholders. So we're going to leave you and thanking you for, for your attention with a, a quote from John Maynard Keynes, which I think is quite telling, you know, also kind of re reprising our motto about uh, challenging today to reinvent tomorrow. You know, it, it's sometimes more difficult to uh, not so much originating new ideas, but actually challenging the old ones and moving on to, to something different. Thank you very much.